We started this morning with Psalm 91 in our pre-service prayer. He who abides under the shadow of the Almighty. You know, if you want to get in someone's shadow, you've got to get pretty close. And you need to come close to God. He's, he's, not, a, he's, he's not a hard dad. He's a loving father. We need to get really, really close to him, especially in these times. We live in, in strange times, people of God. Uh, but don't worry, it's not the end yet. It's getting close, but it's not the end yet. In John 14, in verses 1, and again in verse 27, and Jesus says, uh, Let your heart, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Whose hearts are troubled? Who's seen troubled hearts this week? I've seen some really strange things happen this week that I've never seen in my life. Oh, my goodness. And in verse 27, he says it again. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He adds a line. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. If I had to have a title for my message today, it would be the call to conquer fear. The call to conquer fear. See, in Luke 21, it says, when he's talking about the end times, he says, men's hearts will fail. Men's, when your heart fail, what happens? <laughs> when your heart, men's hearts fail because of fear. Because of fear. Men's hearts fail because of fear. To, and it's really strange because from Abram in Genesis 15 to John on Patmos in the book of Revelation, we see this, this phrase, fear not, more than 350 times in the Bible. Some say there's 365 times. I've lost count. Depending on what translation you read, whether you, I looked through the Hebrew in the Old Testament and the Greek for the New Testament, and I didn't find exactly 365 times, but there was 360 something, probably 366, because God wouldn't miss out a day. Amen. 365 times, some people say there's one for every day of the year. A fear not. The Word tells us to fear not. But there's an abundance of reasons in this world for fear to grip our hearts. There's so many certain evils and so many possible evils that are in this world. And uh, we'd have to be brain dead not to see the issues and the troubles and the problems around us, not in just days like we see it now, but all the, all the length of our days, there's issues and troubles. But to fear not seems to be, with that many times written in the Bible, it seems to be more of a commandment than a suggestion, right? And why does uh, God always come and say, fear not? Because men's hearts, since the fall of man, and when sin came into the world, so did fear come, because when Adam and Eve, before the fall, they were fine. They were happy, enjoying each other, enjoying life in the garden. And then when sin come, the Bible said they hid themselves because they were afraid. Afraid. See, fear comes with sin and the world's full of sin. And fear comes itself. So, but the issue with fear is a fear and trouble. They cause anxiety in our lives and stress and even the medical profession today knows that stress leads to sickness sickness and disease one of the biggest uh, issues of of heart failure we just read it men's hearts fail because of fear stress is the number one reason for heart failure today stress and we know that stress leads to a suppression in the immune system. 
If you, you have an immune system, a physical, you have a physical immune system and you have a spiritual immune system. You know that? And uh, you actually have to, if, you're immu- if your physical immune system is working 100%, do you know that you wouldn't get physically sick? Because your body would fight off every sickness and every disease. That's the way God made it. But your, your, nobody's immune system is working at 100%. But we have to, if you can keep it up there, if you can keep your physical immune system up there, and how do we do that? It's by the way we live our lives and by the way that we, the things we eat and the things we drink. Some of the things we eat, some of the things we drink are, are adverse to our immune system. It pulls our immune system down. Fear and stress pull our immune system down. And one of the biggest issues that we face today with this pandemic virus that's in the world today is if your immune system is not working well, you're going to have trouble fighting it off. So we see, unfortunately, that's why some of our older people, we really need to take care, really need to pray, really need to start believing God. Because as we age, our immune system is not working as well as it was when we're little tiny. You need to look after these little babies. Make sure they're, they're safe in, in this time. Need to pray over them. Read the Word of God over them. Start to bring them into, into the things of God from a very, very young age. You know, uh, I don't know what little books they have now, but get a Bible in their hands <laughs> early on. Yeah. Little Misha had a, a little Noah's Ark book there this morning. She was showing me, and Josh said it, it's, it's actually... It's not a very good book. He said, Noah's shutting the door. Noah didn't shut the door. God shut the door. But hey, that's good for her. Start to teach your kids the things of God. Start to pray. Teach your kids to pray. Start to teach your kids to worship. You know, from a very, very young age, we need to teach our children how to pray. We need to pray with them every day. So if you don't pray with them, who's going to pray with them? I hope you don't send your kids to a Christian school so they become Christians. <laughs> hope you don't send them to church so that they become Christians. No, this will be how you teach them, mum and dad. Amen? Hallelujah. Where are we going to go today? There's a good reason why we shouldn't let fear reign in our hearts. And we said because your hearts will fail. The first time we see this, this uh, statement, that God makes, fear not. It's in Genesis chapter 15, and it's to Abram. And Abram has just come back from a war, and uh, he's, he's had victory and battles. And God comes and he says to Abram, fear not. el in Hebrew. Fear not. And we see it written so many times. But this is the first time. And he says, fear not. Great. You're telling me to fear not, Pastor. You know, have you seen what's happening out there? Yeah, I've seen what's happening. But I'm going to tell you, God didn't say to Abraham, fear not and leave it at that. God actually added something to this statement that he was going to make. He said, fear not, Abraham. For I will be your shield. I will be your magan, your shield. He said, fear not. This is why you don't have to fear, Abraham, because I am going to be your shield. I love that. He doesn't even say, don't worry, Abraham. Here's a shield. Use that. Fear not, Abraham. Fear not, New Life Church. God says, because the promises of God to Abraham are also the promises of God to you. Amen? Fear not, Abraham, or Abram, as he was then, for I will be your shield. Psalm 5.12 picks up on this and says, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous... With favour, you will surround them as with a shield. Righteousness is the key to receiving the shield. Right standing with God is the key 
to being surrounded by God as your shield. See, Abraham was righteous not by what he did. You are righteous not by what you do, but righteous because of what you believe and who you believe. You are righteous in right standing with God because you believe God. You believed on Jesus. You believed on the work of the cross. You believed on the work of salvation. You believed on the work of redemption. Because you believe, it puts you in right standing with God. Now, don't worry. Your, your, your outworking of life will catch up with your belief. Okay? Because we don't always live and act like we believe, right? We're righteous in our belief, but not always in our actions. But thank God I'm not, right, not righteous by what I do. I'm righteous by what I believe. And he said, the righteous, God, you will bless the righteous and your favour will surround them as with a shield. We know that Abraham was righteous. The Bible tells us. And it was accounted to him as righteousness because he believed. So you're, you're in good standing this morning. I'm hoping that you're in church believing on Jesus this morning. I hope that you are at, uh, at that point where you are born again this morning. Receive Jesus as Saviour. Don't worry, your, life, your a working life will catch up if you continue to believe. And then you love seeing new Christians. I, I love new Christians. And uh, because you, you're scared to give them a microphone. Because their, their math is not cleaned up much yet. And uh, they say things that make you squirm a little. And I can remember some of you, don't worry. I can still remember me. But that's okay. As you focus on the Lord your God, your life comes into line. Your life comes into line with Him. And you start he starts cleaning you up. When you wash, you remember, we washed in the blood. We got righteous with God. And then every day we wash in the Word. And if you keep washing, guess what? You get clean. Mm, you do. He says, I will be your shield. And then he says, I will be your exceeding great reward. <laughs> he, does, he doesn't say, and I will give you an exceeding great reward. He says, I will be your exceeding great reward. Hey, a lot of us are after getting rewarded from God. Hebrews 11, uh, 6 says that uh, without faith it's impossible to please God, for he who comes to him must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. See, he gives rewards to those who diligently seek him. But to Abraham, he says, fear not, Abraham, for I shall be your reward. See, a lot of us are not looking for God as reward. We're looking for a, a, a bigger paycheck. Uh, we're looking for something. And God rewards us for, for something good that we do. But he says, I will be your reward. See, because if you get God, you get everything. If God is your reward, with Him comes, uh, He says in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, and we'll, we'll actually go a bit before that in a moment. He, he says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these other things shall be added to you. It's about like, if I get God, I get everything. But sometimes people are after everything and hoping to get God. It's easier to go for one thing, and it is everything, and you get the one thing, and you get everything. Do you get that? You get everything. He says, I will be your reward. That word reward means full payment. I will be your full payment. At the end of Psalm 91, it says, and I will show him my Yeshua, my salvation. That's what Jesus' name means. God is my salvation. Joshua means God, the same word as Jesus. 
Yeshua. I will show him my Yeshua, my salvation. And that's what we need, people, right? That's what we need. We need this to overcome fear. Um, I was going to tell you a story um, about a king called Hezekiah, but you can go read it later. It's in Isaiah 36, 37, and again in 2 Kings 18 and 19. And the king, Hezekiah, is an amazing king. He said there was none like him before or after. He, he just loved God. He was so good. And um, he was the guy who built the aqueducts in Jerusalem and, and all this stuff. He, he was way ahead of his time. He loved the Lord. But the, the king of the Assyrian army came against him. And, uh, and for a little while, you see, you, you've got to read the whole story and pick it up. I'm only just going to give you a couple of highlights. Um, he got threatened by the armies of Assyria. And uh, he actually gave gold and silver from the temple. Tried to buy him off. Tried to buy. See, when, when the enemy attacks, uh, he wants you to give in. He wants you to do things his way. And so, you know, yes, we're talking about COVID-19 this morning. Yes, I'm trying to encourage you this morning not to fear, not to live in fear. But the enemy attacks and we can either make a stand or we can give in, try to, try to, to do a deal. And Hezekiah tried to do a deal. And, and we see, uh, you, you've got to go read the whole story. But then he gets afraid. And so he, sent, he goes to the, the prophet Isaiah. And uh, he, he says in, in verse 37 of Isaiah in chapter 3, And they said to him, Thus says Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and rebuke and blasphemy. Okay, he says, I'm in a day, like, I'm in trouble. So he sends for the prophet, and the prophet's answer to him, when the prophet speaks, it's the word of God. And, the, and Isaiah said to him, thus you shall say to your master, Hezekiah, thus says the Lord, do not be afraid of the words which you have heard, and which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. And then the, then the enemy comes back, and he says to Hezekiah, do not let your God in whom you trust deceive you. Because Hezekiah said, I'm going to trust in the Lord. And the enemy says, don't let, him, don't let the God you serve deceive you. Saying that uh, this city will not be put into my hands. He's, your God is lying to you. That's what he said. And people will say, where is your God? Why is God allowing these things to happen in the earth? Why is, is hundred, over 100,000 people been infected with this disease? And why are thousands of people dying? Where is your God? Don't let your God deceive you. You're going to get it too. It's coming. I read the other day, someone said, it's coming. And then I read this, this thing, said, uh, showed this guy, he's got a shopping trolley full of, Toilet rolls and rice and pasta. He says, tell them COVID 19s coming and they all prepare. Tell them Jesus is coming and they do nothing. Amen. And that's the truth. That's the truth. So Hezekiah received a letter from the hands of the messengers and he read it out and he went to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Oh Lord, and this is his prayer. Oh Lord of hosts, God of Israel the one who dwells between the cherubim. You are God, you alone. And all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see and hear the words that they're saying to me. And the Lord came back and said, because you have prayed to me. Hallelujah. The people of God, we need not be afraid. We have a God who loves us. We have a God who is amazing. Go read that story. It's a great story of when fear comes, what to do. The revelation of the love of God is the true antidote to fear. See, we, you won't get rid of your fear just by declaring you're a person of faith. Well, I believe God this, and I believe God that, and I believe God this, and I believe God that. 
That's great. But the true antidote to fear and the true antidote to overcome any sin and the true antidote to break any addiction and any issue and any problem in this world is a revelation of God's love for you. And that's the truth. I proved that in my own life. Because I knew God loved me, but I didn't really have a revelation of his love. See, I love John in the Bible, the disciple John, who wrote the Gospel of John and the letters of John. Four times he makes the statement about himself, the disciple who Jesus loved. Don't you love that? You think, John, you're so conceited, man. You know, what about, he loved, him, he loved everyone. John didn't say he loved me more than them. He didn't say that Jesus didn't love them. He said, but he had, what, the reason he could say that was because he had a revelation of God's love for him. I'm the disciple that Jesus loved. He didn't make mention that he loved, that God loved him more. He just, could you say that? Hey, Jesus loves me. And really believe it? And really understand it? Really believe that? You know, it just so happened that John was the only disciple that they couldn't kill. Do you know they killed all the others? They couldn't kill John. That's scary, man. For, for the people of the time, when you can't kill somebody, when you have an army and you can't kill someone, do you know that's, that's how scared the world are of Israel at this time? Because they can't destroy them. They're this little country, this little tiny dot on the map. And they're surrounded by these hordes of armies who hate them, but they can't get rid of them. That's scary. They're in fear of this handful of people who call themselves Israelites and they can't beat them because God is with them. Amen? Now, John had a revelation of God's love for him and you, you can't read this one in the Bible but you can go to your history books and you can read they actually tried many ways to kill John and he wouldn't die. He wouldn't die. They actually tried to boil him in oil. Have you ever burnt yourself in the chip pan? They tried to do that with John. They tried to boil him in oil and it didn't work. So in the end, they were so scared of John, they found this rock out in the ocean and they said, stick him on that rock because he is dangerous. And anybody who believes and have a revelation of God's love for them is dangerous to this world because nothing can offend you, nothing can harm you, nothing can come against you when you know, not just, oh yeah, I know God loves me. So why do you act like you act? Why do you do what you do? See, when, when a woman has a revelation of the love of her husband for her and it's displayed, she's not going to stray. She won't stray. It's when they feel unloved when they stray. See, when you know the love of God, you'll not fear and you'll not sin. It's when you don't know love, when you don't know that God loves you, when you stray. When you stray. John knew. And they stuck him on that rock called Patmos just to get him out of the way. Let's get rid of this guy. Let's get him out of the way. It was the worst thing they did because Jesus was on the rock with him. And he had a revelation. And he wrote it down in a book called Revelation. It's, it's not called Revelations. It's called the book of Revelation 
of Jesus Christ. It's not a revelation of the devil. It's not a revelation of 666. It's not a revelation of end time beings. It's, not, it's a revelation of Jesus Christ. And if you read it as a revelation of Jesus Christ, you'll not get confused. 1 John 4.18. Turn there with me. <clears throat> no, you don't, no, go to John 17. I'll read 1 John 4.18. Go to John, Gospel of John, chapter 17. 1 John 4.18 says, There is no fear in love, because perfect love casts out all fear. Perfect love is not your love for God. It's God's love for you. Your, let me give you a revelation this morning. Your love for God is not perfect. <laughs> I don't care how much you love God, it's not perfect. But His love for you is perfect. Because perfect love casts out all fear. Where did I say go? John. John chapter 17. I've still got those pages in my Bible. It's not fell out yet. Praise God. John 17. Oh, glory. Listen to this. Verse 23. This is Jesus' prayer. John 17 is a prayer of Jesus. And if you ever want to hear what he thinks about you, read this prayer. Verse 23 says, I in them and you in me. He's talking to his father. Jesus talking to his father. I in them you in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me, underline this next line, and have loved them as you have loved me. The old King, I think the old King James says, even as. That you have loved them as you have loved me. These are the words of Jesus. Not and you have loved them almost as much as you love me. No. The way God the Father loves God the Son is the same way that God loves you, Albert. He loves you just like he loved Jesus. Now it's hard to, like, if God loved me 50%, of how much he loved Jesus, that would be good enough for me. Would it be good enough for you? No, he loves you. But you can't get that into your finite little mind. That God loves you so much. And that, my friend, is the antidote to fear. Because when you know God's love for you, then you have... That will drive out any fear and you'll have no issue because whether you catch the virus or whether you don't catch the virus, who cares? God loves me. And God loves me, right? Second Thessalonians 3 3 says, The Lord is faithful and he will establish you and guard you from the evil one. His faithfulness is your protection. Your protection is not a face mask or hand sanitizer, as good as that is, and you need to do that. I hope you all washed your hands before you come to church this morning. Hey, if nothing else happens, it may get a, a generation of people washing their hands. Hey, that would be good. Oh my goodness, if it ever breaks out in India, they're in big trouble, man, because they all eat, they don't use knives and forks, they eat with their hands. And when I go to Mark and Rebecca's house, I can, I'm allowed to eat with my hands. <laughs> Hallelujah. And if you've ever been in one of those washrooms in an Indian restaurant, oh my goodness. You're supposed to go in and wash your hands first. They could come out dirtier than when you went in. <laughs> yeah, that's, they've got good immune system. <laughs> Hallelujah. His faithfulness is your protection. But Ephesians 6 7 says, Haven't done all to stand. Have you done all to stand in this day? Well, have you washed your hands? Have you, are you aware of what's happening around you? Are you aware of all these things? You need to be aware but not in fear of. 
not in fear of. Wash your hands. Be aware. Don't cough in my face. <laughs> I saw a video clip the other day on a train in Sydney. Anyone see that? Where the woman just coughed in the guy's face. And he went, are you serious? Why did you do that? She said, shut up. He said, you're disgusting. She said, you're disgusting as well. And she went, <coughs> coughed in his face again. My goodness. He must have been a good Christian man. Because if that had been me, I would have slapped her. I think. <laughs> haven't done all to stand, so that means haven't done all you know to do, then stand in his promise of faithfulness and protection. Come on, people of God. We have a God who loves us. Be led by the Spirit, not motivated by fear. Be led by the Spirit, not motivated by by fear. God knows where the virus is. <laughs> he knows every little droplet. Who has it? What surface it's resting on? Listen to him. And even if you don't listen to him or don't hear him, and if you get it, you won't die. You won't die. Amen. Trust in God. Believe God not to get it. But if you do, believe God for complete healing. I love the scripture in Acts 26 where Paul is about to board the ship to go to Rome. And uh, the weather's looking bad and Paul says, Boys, <laughs> I wouldn't go out to sea if I was you in that ship. It looks like it's going to be a tough night. But they didn't listen to him. Uh, they listened to the, the people on the ship and they went anyway. And they soon hit some, some troubled waters. Amen. They soon hit some troubled times. Tempests are tossed, the Bible says. And Paul's on the ship. And he said, I told you not to go. I told you so. He, did, they tell you that, don't they? I told you so. Do you know that's pride when people say, I told you so. Because your word was better. But Paul, he says, okay, boys, don't worry. No one's going to lose their life tonight. And the ship broke up and they all ended up in the water. He didn't say, we're not going to lose the ship tonight. He said, we're not going to lose our life tonight. Even if the ship breaks up, we're not going to lose our life. Even if we, we suffer in some of this area, we're not going to lose our life. It'll be okay. The, an angel spoke to me tonight and said, fear not. For you won't lose your life. I love that scripture. Go home and read. And I reckon, I wonder what the boys were thinking when the ship started to break up. Oh, all right. I don't know who you was listening to, Paul. But the Bible says the ship broke up. They hung on to pieces of wood. And they got washed ashore on the beach in Mulder. Oh, I was on that beach one day. I was on that beach. I was scared to go in the water, but I was on that beach. And there's a big statue of Paul out in the ocean. It was on the beach where he got washed up. And not one life was lost. Sometimes when God says, go to the other side, he doesn't tell us what's on the journey. And as Pastor Jane said this morning, is this a test? I got this thing with my grandson that uh, is a test. So we was in McDonald's one day, and uh, I bought him some fries and whatever, nuggets, and I said, can I have one of your chips? And he goes, no. And I go, what? And I said, did you know Granddad bought them? And he goes, yeah, but now they're mine. I said, you're right. I said, Granddad's got enough money in his pocket to go and buy all the chips in this place. As many as they can fry. But I was only asking for one chip. And he looked at me and I said, it was just a test. It was just a test to see if he was generous. And he goes, I said, I don't want one. I said, it was just a test. So every time me and Blake have a conversation now, 
about anything, he goes, is this a test, granddad? <laughs> is this a test? Is this a test? What's happening in our world today? Is this sorting out the people, the goats from the sheep, the people from the people? I heard a great story once. I'm not sure whether it's true, but it sounded good. I read it in a book. Not everything that's written in a book is true unless it's this book. Amen. Be careful. Be careful what you're doing out there on social media and all the stuff you're reading because not all of it is true. There's a lot of false information out there. But it was in Russia. And some soldiers came into a church one morning with machine guns. And, uh, and they said to the congregation, everyone who is not really a Christian, you can leave now. And they cocked the, the guns. Half the church left. Then they shut the doors and he put his gun down. He said, now we can praise the Lord. Some things like this virus will sort out those who are coming to church and those who are coming to Jesus. Let me finish with this. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Hebrews 12, 2. Amen. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. He is the truth, the way, and the life. All I'm hearing is COVID-19. Corona, Corona, Corona. That's all I'm hearing out of people's mouths. Out of, when I look on social media, if I go on Facebook, it's all it is. Every, er, nearly every uh, thread, every other one is about COVID-19. Yeah, some people are writing nice little scriptures by it, and all, but everyone is focused on Corona. When the snakes bit the people in the camp in Numbers 21, Moses had to lift up the bronze serpent on the pole and the people lifted their eyes and looked and they were healed. And Jesus said in John 3.14, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now I read this online last night. It wasn't on a Christian page, but I really liked it. What we see depends mainly on what we look for. Amen? Have you ever noticed how human beings, as human beings, we tend to go negative? Looking out into the world, we see the crumpled fast food bag in the street and the torn curtain in the window. Looking in the mirror, we see the pores and the dark circles under our eyes. We see the freckles and we miss the dimple, or we hate the dimple and we miss the smile. We sung this morning in the song, our gaze transfixed on Jesus' face, not on coronavirus. Let's get our gaze fixed on Jesus. In Josh's offering this morning, he talked about which, where's the perspective? What are you looking at? Which part are you looking at? The blood of Jesus has cleansed us from all of our sin, and by his stripes we were healed. Let us look into the face of God and trust him. Amen. Come on, church. We're Christians. We're people of faith. We're, we're Jesus followers. Let the name of Jesus be on our lips and minds more and more. Don't tell our kids the fear of a virus without telling them the overwhelming, all-embracing love and healing power of Jesus. Yes, we teach about the dangers of this world, but not more than the faithfulness of our great God. He is your shield and your exceeding great reward. Amen. Romans 5.17 says, Those of you who have received an abundance of grace, is that you? And the gift of righteousness will reign in life. This virus won't reign. It's, it'll, the Bible says that uh, tears may last for a night. That's a season. But joy cometh in the morning. Amen. It will be over soon. And we'll be back to normal. And I wonder if you could build your life a little bit more. Whether God will take this evil 
and use it for his good. To get people to focus more upon him and come to him. When the towers went down, there was more people in church that week after than ever before in New York City. Three months later, there was less than there was before the towers went down. But I pray some heard the gospel. And I pray this morning that through this troubled time that we walk in now, that we will keep our eyes transfixed on Jesus. Let's not be distracted by this, that, and everything else. Yes, there's things that we have to do. There's rules and regulations in this country. I lost my visa to go to India this week and uh, had it suspended, so I can't travel to India next month. And, uh, and also lost a holiday in Thailand at, in, at the first week of next month. Who cares? Who cares? Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones, that's us, to him belong. We are weak. He is strong. Amen. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Father in heaven, I thank you for this morning. I thank you, God, that we are surrounded with your favor as a shield. That you will be our shield and our exceeding great reward. Father, keep us safe. We look to you to keep us safe. We look to you for healing. We look to you, my God, uh, to, to walk us through the valley of the shadow of this death. You would walk us through. And you will bring us out the other side with a smile on our face, with joy in our hearts. We will be safe in your name.